guys in this new video of mine and if you're new to my channel hi I'm Dea Anissa people usually call me Dea and currently I'm a student at Pembangunan Jaya University so today as you can see in the title we are going to talk about a very special topic which is related to Indonesian culture I'm an Indonesian myself so I'm very excited about this video but before we get to the basics let's talk about Indonesia Indonesia is a country in Southeast Asia known for its diverse culture and natural wonders such as Bali. It's a fact that there are people that are not familiar with Indonesia, but familiar with Bali. Aside from its beautiful views, Bali also has many unique cultures and traditions like the Kachak dance and the Galungan ceremony. But we're not going to talk about that. Instead, I'm going to introduce you guys to another amazing culture that we have here from West Sumatra. West Sumatra is a province located in Western Indonesia and also has many unique cultures. One of them is the plate dance. My mother is from West Sumatra, so I've watched these plate dance performances at many family weddings. But the one time I actually got to know the dance is when I was in middle school. My art teacher gave the class a project to perform various cultures. So basically the class was divided into groups and each group was given a culture to perform and mine was this plate dance. So my friends and I kind of gathered to watch the performance on YouTube before we practice the dance and I remember we were really worried because what's unique about this dance is that it uses plates as dance props. It was very tricky because we have to keep the plate steady on our hands while we move around and do hand movements. But thankfully, we found plates that are light and not slippery, so it was kind of easier for us to practice the dance. Therefore, I thought it is the time for you guys to get to know this amazing dance as well. So without further ado, let's get to it. Plate dance is one of many traditional dances from West Sumatra, and it uses two plates tightly held by the dancers on the palm of their hands with quick swaying movements. According to RimbaKita.com, on June 5th, 2020, this dance has existed since around 800 years ago. The plate dance was originally a ritual performed by the locals after a big harvest as gratitude to the gods. The dancers would wear beautiful traditional clothing and behave gently from making a formal appearance to the gods. This ritual was done by bringing offerings such as food presented on plates which then carried by the dancers in movements according to the rhythm of the music. So what about the traditional clothing I mentioned earlier? The performing dancers have to wear traditional clothing. The clothes worn by male dancers and female dancers are slightly different but still in uniform, usually in the color of red and gold that are believed as carriers of luck and riches. The male dancers wear costumes called Rang Mudo. The characteristics of Rang Mudo are 1. They are in long sleeves and 2. They have decorations in the form of gold laces. The top is knee length and the pants are known as Salan Glombang. They are in large sizes and have the same color as the top clothing. In addition, male dancers also wear songket clothes wrapped around their waist and a triangular headpiece also made of songket clothes. For you who don't know, Songket cloth is a traditional fabric by the Malays. It is hand-woven in silk or cotton, patterned with silver or gold threads that stand out against the background cloth to create a shimmering effect. Next, female dancers. Female dancers wear costumes called baju kurung, made of satin and velvet. They also wear Songket cloth on the left side as decoration along with other accessories such as tassel necklaces and traditional earrings. Just like male dancers, female dancers also wear a headpiece made of Songket cloth that looks like a horn. It is known as the Kruak Tanduak Balapak. Let's talk about the music. Traditional musical instruments used to accompany the plate dance include the gong, tambourine, saluang, talempong, and rabak. A gong is a percussion instrument that takes form of a flat, round metal disc which is hit with a mallet. It is used to help the dancers to move and determine steps. 
Tambourine is also a percussion instrument with a frame, often of wood or plastic, and pairs of small metal jingles. Salawang is only found in West Sumatra. It is made of thin bamboo, and the way to play it is by blowing it. Talempong also comes from West Sumatra. It is round and made of brass, while the bottom is hollow. The way to play it is by hitting the surface. Last but not least, the rabab. The rabab is similar to a violin, but made from a coconut shell. So all of these musical instruments are played together to create traditional songs like Takian Sai Diusung and Taki Pinghing Kuabalas to accompany the play dance. Now why don't we talk about the dance movements? We now know that play dancers uses two plates tightly held on top of their hands with quick swaying movements according to the rhythm of the music. But there are some movements that we don't find in other dances. They are unique and different. The first one is the hoeing movement. The meaning of this movement is a farmer who is doing hoeing in the field. The second one is the weeding movement. This movement shows us the activity of a farmer when cleaning the land for farming from pests or garbage. The next one is the removing garbage movement. This movement shows us the activity of a farmer when throwing away the waste from the weeding activity. The next one is planting the seeds movement. This movement shows us when farmer plants one by one the seeds that have been uprooted. The Gotong Royong movement. This movement describes the cooperation between male farmers and female farmers while farming. And the last but not least and most unique dance movement is stepping on broken glass movement. This movement is shown at the end of the dance performance. So before the dance ends, the dancers throw their plates until they crash on the floor and continue dancing on the broken glass magically without hurting their feet. Why don't we take a look? According to strongergirl.wordpress.com posted on July 25, 2016, this dance became more widespread when the Sriwijaya Kingdom fell to Majapahit in the 16th century. The spread was then brought by the Sriwijaya people who fled to surrounding Malay countries. But in West Sumatra itself, with the arrival of Islam, the play dance is no longer a ritual practice to thank the gods. Instead, it became a dance performance for various events like weddings. Now, the plates used in play dance are empty or put a flash candle on it. Well, that is all I can tell you guys about this amazing dance. But before we get to the end of the video, let's watch a short clip of this play dance. <laughs> for watching this video. If you like this, please click the thumbs up button below for more interesting videos to come. Well, I'll see you on the next video. Bye!